Today we're going to look at my two favourite exercises for shoulders, why I like them and how to perform them properly. I'm going to get stuck straight into this one as it's going to be a big topic, but right before I do, I want to hear from you, so let me know your favourite two shoulder exercises in the comments section below. I'll give you 10 seconds to do that and then we're going to dive right in. All right, so the most common complaint that I get with people when they're training their shoulders is feeling their traps or neck taking over when they try to do any direct shoulder work like lateral raises. So I wanna start by addressing this very common issue and it's a big area that I've made a lot of mistakes with in the past as well. So here's a very simple thought to consider. Anytime you feel something other than the target muscle working, and especially when it dominates in an exercise, such as the traps or neck when you're training shoulders, or the hamstrings or lower back when you're training glutes, or maybe it's the biceps when you're training back. Usually, what's going on is you've chosen a poor exercise, you've set it up incorrectly, or you're performing it incorrectly. Let's take the biceps, for example. If I chose, say, a leg extension for biceps, you can all clearly understand why I would feel other regions working, such as my legs, as the biceps don't contribute to the leg extension whatsoever. We all know that I need to be performing some kind of curl motion here at the arm. But what if I was performing this curl motion, which is the correct movement, but I had it set up poorly? What if I grabbed a dumbbell and was holding it up to my side here instead whilst I was curling? Again, you don't even have to understand biomechanics too well to understand why I might be feeling my shoulders more than my biceps. Because even though I might be using perfect technique and perfect form, I've set things up incorrectly. So while this might look completely obvious to you in this example, you'll be surprised how many people that you see in the gym that are making this critical mistake with their exercise selection or their setup. Probably the most common example that I see in the gym is people doing their rotator cuff warm-ups with dumbbells. When in reality, yes, you're taking your rotator cuff muscles through the correct movement, I guess, but it's set up incorrectly with the traps and biceps working isometrically and the rotator cuff muscles receiving absolutely none of that load as they go through their movement. So if you're currently doing that, stop. Switch to a cable or bend over with the dumbbells. But anyway, coming back on track to shoulders, neck and traps. If you're feeling your traps or neck dominating in your shoulder exercises, it's probably because of the exact same issue. You've chosen the wrong exercise, you're setting it up incorrectly, or you're performing it incorrectly. So let's take a look at my absolute favorite exercise now and how it overcomes these issues. My favorite exercise, and probably the best exercise for developing that wide, capped look to your shoulders, is a variation on a classic. It's the Y raise. This is a movement that has been popularized by my friend Kasim Hansen, and I think it is absolutely brilliant, as it overcomes all the potential issues that people have with training their shoulders. First of all, if we contrast this with a typical dumbbell lateral raise out to your side, or what I guess we could now call a T raise, the T raise puts your traps and neck into a good position to be working, as some or all of their fibers are in direct alignment with the weight. So of course they're going to work. The shoulders work too as well, but you'll always find yourself fighting the urge to rotate your arm outwards, which is probably why you've heard the cue of rotating your hands down or imagine you're pouring milk out of a milk jug when performing the exercise to put that mid delt on top. Instead of doing that and using that cue and constantly fighting against your natural biomechanics, why don't we just change the setup slightly so you can focus on what really matters, which is getting as much as you can out of your shoulders and put as much tension through your shoulders. So for the Y raise, you'll be lying on an inclined bench. This forwards angle of your body on the bench doesn't just provide bracing support to give you more stability, it also allows you to put your mid delt into a direct line of pull against the resistance of the dumbbell. Or in less geeky terms, it means it puts the middle delt on top without you having to artificially rotate your shoulder in. It also allows your traps to do some of the work, 
but due to the position that you're in, what you'll find is they don't tend to dominate as much as they're in a much less advantageous position to do so. So instead of dominating, they'll take more of a supportive role in coordinating the movement that is occurring at your shoulder by stabilizing the shoulder blade. Now, with that in mind, it's also important to be talking about what you should be doing with your shoulder blades when you perform this exercise, as that is another huge error that I see people making and another one that I've made a lot in the past with my own training and my own coaching. There is a natural rhythm or relationship that exists here in the shoulder joint known as scapulohumeral rhythm. What it means is that for every degree of motion that occurs here at the arm, or the humerus for the anatomy nerds out there, there should be a degree of motion occurring at the shoulder blade, or the scapula, as well. And by the exact same token, if one of those bones can't move for whatever reason, that will restrict the movement of the other bone. So, if we keep the shoulder blades fixed in one position only, that will stop the arm's ability to move. When our goal is to move the arm from A to B, we must allow the shoulder blades to move freely as well. While it is possible to create some sort of disassociation between these two bones by locking the shoulder blades back and down, your nervous system will always be fighting against you on this, and it will cause a big loss in output from the target muscles, and also has the potential to create a lot of shoulder issues down the road. And that is the biggest mistake that I see people making. It's keeping their shoulder blades pinned back and down when performing the fly motion. Instead, we need to let them move freely and trust that the right exercise, setup and technique is being used to get you working in the right regions. Again, if you feel the traps or neck dominating, that should be your sign that you haven't nailed the perfect setup for your structure and you need to adjust something. It can be a little frustrating at first, but I think it's unrealistic to expect to nail everything perfectly the first time you try something, or even the first few times you try something. So don't be afraid to take the extra time to experiment and find what angle of bench works best for you in terms of comfort and your ability to perform the exercise. I also have a, another video that goes a little further into this concept and also another big mistake that I see people making with their shoulder training, which I'll drop a link to up here in the corner so you can go check that out after this. I'll also put a link in the description box and the pinned comments down below for you as well. All right, so that was a pretty long explanation, all focused on just one exercise. I really, really, really do hope that you found that useful and interesting though, because it's something that I think is just so important and is so misinformed throughout the industry right now. It's something that I've made mistakes on in the past as well, so I'm taking it upon myself now to make sure that I'm doing what I can to improve the quality of information that is being spread throughout the industry. So, exercise number two is actually going to be a simple variation on exercise number one, which is going to be doing it single arm and in a cable station. You get all of the same benefits in terms of the position by doing this in the cable station as opposed to dumbbells, but the biggest difference is of course the use of cable resistance instead of dumbbell resistance. This is important for allowing you to emphasize the stress from the resistance on a different position for the shoulder muscle. On dumbbells, the hardest position is right here when the dumbbell is furthest away from your shoulder joint, which is close-ish to the fully shortened position for the mid-delt. However, on the cable, with this setup, the hardest position is more like here, where the cable is furthest away from my shoulder joint. Then, as I reach out further and further, the cable draws in closer to my shoulder joint, which causes the resistance to drop off slightly. This variable resistance is why people tend to feel better on cables as opposed to dumbbells a lot of the time. Neither is good or bad, they're just a different expression of resistance and stress on your body. The other advantage here is that the cable also allows me to reach a complete overhead position up here, with there still being some tension placed on my shoulders. I didn't access this range due to the angle of the bench when using dumbbells, so this allows you to appropriately stress the shoulders through an even larger contractile range of motion. 
Now, you could also do this with two arms instead of just one if you wanted to, and you could also do this lying down on a bench as well. But for me personally, I just do it standing and single arm for convenience, more often than not, as I usually can't be bothered setting everything up even when I train here in my own private space, let alone if I was navigating a typical busy gym environment. So there you go guys, my absolute two favorite exercises of shoulders and a big fat rant on shoulder mechanics and exercise selection. I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned something useful. If you need any further clarification on anything discussed, feel free to drop any questions you have down below. Thank you all for tuning in all the way through and I'll see you all next time.